for all of us who know the Lord Jesus as our Savior, who truly, truly have been born again, who know the Lord Jesus as our Savior, the veil, the covering, the veil has been taken away. The veil for us has been taken away. We have spiritual sight. We can behold the Lord for who he is. And the point I want to make to you, and the thing I want to emphasize, is what privilege we have to see and behold the Lord, but how little, how little we make of it. What do you see? Listen, what do you see about God and God's work and the certainty of judgment and the urgency of the hour and the plan of God for the ages? What do you see and understand about the word of God and the coming of the Savior? What do you see about a world on fire that's headed to an inevitable meeting of the judgment of Almighty God? You and I live our lives on a daily basis as if we've seen nothing except this world. We live our lives as if we've seen nothing except what the rest of the men and women of this world have seen. But we have this glorious privilege because the veil has been removed. We can look in the face of God from glory to glory and see the Lord Jesus and what he's up to in this world. But do we see it? How is your vision? How is mine? You and I know the answer, don't we? Poor, dimmed. When we should be seeing so much more and so much further. Why is it that certain parents do for their children spiritual things? Are you listening? Pouring into the hearts of their children spiritual emphasis, giving them the word of God praying with them, taking daily things and the ordinary things of life and teaching great spiritual truth. Why is it some parents do that and others go through the same routines, the same daily things, and never make those spiritual applications because one set of parents has seen something the other set of parents hasn't seen? God says the veil has been removed. You and I are seeing as far as we desire to see. What's the difference in churches? The same thing that's the difference in families. Some churches are churches of vision. Some churches are churches of dim vision. What's the difference in preachers? Some preachers are preachers of vision. They've seen the Lord from glory to glory. Others have not. I ask you, has the veil truly been removed? Then are we making use of the spiritual capacity we have to see what we ought to be seeing? It came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them. And after it, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. This is the perfect code of ethics. This is perfect. It came from God. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. And if you read this, you're going to think, well, why does Moses cover his face? And you read that they were afraid to look upon him. He's been with God, and the reflective glory of God is upon his face, and they were afraid. But when you get to the New Testament, turn back there, please, to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul says the reason he covered his face is because the glory was leaving. It was fading away. 
What is God saying to us? He's saying this old covenant in the law that man could not keep, this law that God gave and the men of Israel and women said, I'll keep it, and they could not keep it. It's fading, it's abolished, it's being done away with. You, you're not going to be ever saved by the law. All the law can do is condemn. It's perfect, it's glorious, it's absolutely a perfect code of ethics, but all it can do is condemn and kill and put to death. And Paul said, but it's fading away, it's abolished, it's done away with. And the Lord made a promise that he was going to do something so marvelous that men would not just receive God's mercy and forgiveness, their sins would be cleared. God would behold them as if they were never sinners. That's what Jesus does for us. In the book of Hebrews, if you'd like to turn there to Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, beginning with verse 18, for you're not come unto the mount that might, you're not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. God said, you're not come to that kind of mountain that Moses so exceedingly feared that he said, I fear and quake. You're not come to a mountain that, that even if a beast touched it, it died. You're not come to that. That's been abolished. That's been done away with. That's faded. And the Jew's heart is still black and veiled, and that's all he sees. But not God's children. The veil has been removed. And the Lord said, verse 22 of Hebrews 12, but ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. God said, that's where we've come. That's where we are. That's what we've received. We're not asked to walk into a tabernacle or a temple. Only the high priest on the day of atonement could go in, and just for a moment he could go in, and with trembling hand, with trembling hand, he sprinkled blood on the mercy seat, and out he went. God said, you're not come to that. Look, look, you and I go right into not some model of heaven. We go right into heaven, into the very throne room of God Almighty, and we speak to the living God. Because the veil's been removed. But we don't live that way. Why don't you be honest? You don't live that way. And I don't live that way. We have so much. The veil has been removed. It's been taken away. We can behold the Lord and be like the Lord by beholding the Lord. Think what is ours. And we've never taken it, claimed it, received it. I don't know if there is a greater tragedy that comes to my mind than to think what God has for us and yet we live the way we live. Oh, what God has for us.